Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to the Human Services Addiction Services KSAC Information Summer Series Information Session. I'm Laura Laporte with the Admissions Office, and I have David Clayton and Selena Barber from our admissions team along with me today as well. Today's going to be a really a fantastic opportunity to learn about a great program that um, is uh, in high demand uh, within our community. Um, we've got uh, Julie Lynn with us, assistant professor here at Fulton Montgomery Community College to talk about um, this really important um, program. And then Courtney is here to talk about a fantastic grant that basically will pay for your education. So that's really a great, uh, a great combination. Um, as we go through this uh, recording, if you have questions, please feel free to put them into the chat. We'll take a look at them and, and ask them uh, of our presenters as we get started. But with that, I'm going to turn it over to Professor Lynn and have her get started uh, talking about um, our human services and our addiction services KSAC program. Okay, thank you, Laura. So uh, again, my name is Julie Lind. I oversee those programs that Laura mentioned, and I teach most all the classes that are part of the programs. So there are three programs um, that we're talking about today. We have two within human services. We have our career track program, which would be our AAS, and then our transfer program, which is our AS. So a, uh, a student that would come to FM that is looking to actually get a four-year degree in social work or human services, human development, something along that line, could start at FM and get their first two years completed of that four-year degree. Um, and, and then another option is if someone wants to come and get a two-year degree and begin working in the field. So our AAS Human Service Program is set up so that the last semester, the students do a four-credit internship. And those are um, you know, opportunities right in our community where people that would graduate from this program would be working. So a lot of those internships actually end up turning into job offers and, and possibly jobs for people. So we have a lot of opportunities um, in, in the community to work with children, adults, elderly, to work in schools or hospitals, um, to work in mental health, uh, in, in child welfare, and um, many other um, you know, areas of human services. Agencies in our community that one would work with might be Mental Health Association, Catholic Charities, um, St. Mary's Hospital, are probably some of the big ones. We have positions at um, HFM Prevention Council. Um, and we take, they take interns at some of the, the area K through 12 schools. So basically though, those internships can get set up for whatever the student is interested in. So we try to get them set up with, you know, with an area that they wanna work in. So also, like I mentioned, um, students might transfer with a human service AS degree. And so um, big transfer schools for us are probably SUNY Albany, um, St. Rose are probably the two biggest in the, the area. There are also bachelor's of social work programs at SUNY Plattsburgh. Um, students might go to Syracuse, might go downstate to New Paltz. Um, so there are a number of really great programs that students will transfer to. And I stay in touch with a lot of my former students and they definitely feel prepared to enter, you know, a four-year institution as a junior, you know, and they're, and they're ready to hit those classes as they get more into the major. Then the other program we're going to talk about today is addiction services. And so that's a specialized program. If someone wants to work in either prevention of addictions or treatment or recovery support for uh, people that have, have had addictions that are living in recovery from those addictions. So um, that, that's a, a newer program for us. We've had that since 2018, but it's grown and we have a lot of connections with um, agency partners. Um, definitely, you know, St. Mary's is a, a huge employer for um, addictions counselors, as well as, um, the Recovery Center through HFM Prevention Council, they have a lot of recovery support. Catholic Charities has a, a pretty robust prevention program um, where they're getting into the K through 12 schools and doing education. So along with getting the associate degree in addiction services, a student would also get the 350 hours of training that they need to become a KSAC 
KSAC is a credentialed alcohol and substance abuse counselor in New York State. So we have a lot of students that come looking to pursue that credential. And that is, uh, as Laura mentioned, definitely a highly sought after credential in New York State. The other option is to do those eight classes when you're here pursuing your human service AS degree. And I definitely encourage students to do that as well, even if they're thinking they wanna go on and finish a four year or finish a master's degree in social work, if they can do that 350 hours of training here at FM, then they can they can um, pursue that KSEC in the future. So that's a really um, great possibility as well. The, the thing I'll say is a lot of students aren't quite sure which of those three programs they fit best into, and that's fine because actually the first semester, if you start, if you would start now, you know, into the fall, the first semester of all three programs mirror one another. So you take um, that first semester HUS 100, which is Introduction to Helping Professions, and that gives a really good overview of the entire field of human services, um, all the different places you can work, the skills you need, um, the knowledge, a little bit about ethics, um, stages of helping. Um, and so we talk in there about the entire field and try to figure out if it's gonna be the right fit. And then also, all um, three groups of students take the foundations of addiction counseling uh, or addiction services, excuse me, that's HUS 120. And so that gives an overview specific to the role of someone working in that field of addiction services. Um, and that's, of course, not everybody's desire when they come to FM. But I will say, working myself in the field of human services for almost 20 years, a lot of the work we do touches addiction services. So I worked, you know, at Northeast Parent Child Society myself for 12 years as a mental health counselor and then as a coordinator of services. And I worked with kids who were separated from their parents in foster care. And one of the biggest reasons that happens is because of addictions. So really anywhere you're going to work with older people, younger people, you know, with um, groups and families in schools, you're going to touch addiction services. So I like to make sure all the students have a good overview in that field. So that being said, um, you would kind of do your best to choose which of those three is going to be the best fit for you. Reach out to me, talk to me about your interests. I'm available. Um, but, but basically choose one and get in those classes. And then we'll talk much, much more about it, you know, as we get going in the fall so that you can make sure you're in the right program so that in the spring you get registered for the right classes. So that's a quick overview. Um, I don't know, Courtney, I know you had also some things you were going to talk about. Yeah, great. Hello, everyone. My name is Courtney Chantel, and I'm really excited to be with you all today. Um, I'm going to share my screen quick so you can just kind of see a brief overview of um, what we call the Workforce Education and Training Grant. Um, with the assistance of Julie teaching all of these amazing courses, um, and the backing of the admissions department, like you see on this call, that really support um, not only this program, but all programs here at FMCC. Um, this uh, grant really supports um, the KSAC credential. So the highlighted things that I wanted to touch on are really um, the finance piece. We all like a little help when we think about going to school and the costs that we uh, accrue while doing so. Um, so this grant actually covers up to $3,000 towards tuition fees and health insurance. Um, and then we also include a $5,000 stipend. So if you're interested in getting your case act, this is a great bonus to pursuing it. Um, you know, you get that financial support so that you're able to really attend school um, and, and hopefully meet all your needs uh, financially while you're in school. Um, the goal of the grant is really to increase the number of people working in addiction services in our communities, um, you know, really just expanding the workforce across the entire state. Um, and no matter what you do, I too, like Julie, come from a human service background. So, um, you know, what you really take what you learn in these, in these courses and apply it to this real life work. Um, and, you know, I think a big part what I've learned um, from Julie is this grant really helps support in those courses, the promotion and um, that the knowledge of trauma informed care practices. Trauma informed care is a great 
big buzzword right now in human service fields. Um, and the courses that you will um, take with Julie really give you a great foundation. I would have loved to have had that when I started in a human services position. Um, the last really piece that I want to hit on is this um, grant really supports this idea of collaborative team-based, this real true training. So we have what, um, this is our idea, if we had a perfect vision, um, we're able to have this behavioral health lab where Julie will work uh, really one-on-one -on -one with students to learn these telehealth services, which is, you know, in the world we live in today, it's, it's always beneficial to learn those skills as well. And this grant helps support that real life training that you'll get. Um, so not only is the finance uh, financial support a, a great benefit, the coursework and the academic support. Um, you additionally will get the support of me. Um, you know, so my door is always open to you get that extra, um, you know, support in general to make sure that you are able to attend classes and really finish your coursework. Just to add a little to that, um, and the reason why that behavioral Health lab is so exciting to us is that a lot of my students I find really appreciate when they can learn by doing things. You know, people learn in different ways. I certainly have students that learn a lot by reading textbooks and listening to lectures, but I do think it really comes alive for most of us when we can practice it, you know, and really apply something that we're learning in the classroom. And, you know, human services is one of those things where you have to be, you have to be smart and you have to have knowledge and there's certainly guidelines and stages and theories and, you know, that we have to learn and we have to know, um, you know, think about developmental stages. We have to understand what's appropriate developmentally for a 10 year old so that if we see behavior, we know, but you, you can't just have knowledge, right? I mean, you have to be able to have, um, you know, an in-depth conversation with someone, give them eye contact, listen to what they're saying, affirm their strengths, make connections with people, form relationships. And how each of us do that is so different because we're all so unique. And so I really love opportunities to let my students practice what makes them, you know, what, what's gonna make them unique and special it, it, when they're working out in the field and how are they gonna connect? Because it's not gonna be the way I connect. It wouldn't be the way Courtney would connect, right? And they have to figure that out themselves. So a lot, I have always done a lot of application-based learning. To be honest, when I remember my education, that's when I started to really learn things and it used to click for me. And I can look back now and see those things. So uh, this lab is incredibly exciting to me because we can simulate what it will be like for students when they're actually out there working in the field um, and they get lots of practice and experiential learning. And the thing about our field and our community is there are so many opportunities to get out there now and serve. You know, there's all kinds of opportunities and people are just eager to get to know the students at FM who are going to be in the workforce. So there, there are um, lots of ways that my students become involved now through class projects, but then also their own initiative that they take to get involved and to apply these skills right from the beginning of their education. So that's just a little bit, just to give people a sense of what it would be actually like to take these classes. Julie, I just have a quick question for you. You know, viewers might be wondering um, what is it really like to work in human services? What, what are some of the benefits for me as an employee uh, at the end of the day, you know, what kind of contribution and, and the takeaway that I would have of feeling good? What, what makes you feel mm -hmm. good about this particular profession? Can you talk a little bit about maybe the attributes of someone who's interested in working in human services and specifically KSAC? Okay, yeah, I think that's a great question. I do think people that are going to be successful in this field have to have some kind of, you know, internal intrinsic motivation to help people change uh, because you don't get a whole lot of gratification from other people, uh, you know, and, um, and, and extrinsic, you know, external kinds of motivation. I always say like, you know, like social work, it's like, we're like these unsung heroes. No one wants to to be honest, nobody wants to talk about some of the problems that we help people with. Like nobody wants to talk about kids not being able to live with their parents and come to foster care. Like that's just not, <laughs> you know, like sexy and exciting. Um, but 
we but we kind of you have to be okay with not you know getting a lot of notice i know that sounds kind of ridiculous but um i i think and i think that comes from kind of an internal drive um to and a passion um i don't know courtney you you could add things too i'm sure because you worked in this field what are your thoughts about that I mean, I think you hit the nail right on the head. I think it's really an internal drive and a passion. Mm -hmm. um, and I know it sounds kind of cliche, but you you do, you have this internal drive to just help people. Um, and it's the idea of, you know, I think the people who are um, really in need of the assistance in the, these human services helping professions, um, you know, it's the idea that they're gonna come to you not once or twice, but 10 or 12 times or 20 times. And to know that you are that one trusting individual. I mean, mm -hmm. that's where that passion really comes into play. So I think you really, Julie, hit it on the head when you said that, that in internal passion for what you yeah. do. And it's a unique opportunity that you have to be involved in people's lives. You know, you don't, you're working with people that are kind of at one of the worst places of their life, probably, right? They're kind of at the, the rock bottom if you will. And, um, it's, it's, uh, a, it's, it's a unique, I guess it's a unique opportunity that someone would allow you to hear their story and to help walk them through, uh, you know, a, a bet to a better place, really to give them that hope. Um, and, you know, it's not always perfect. Like Courtney just said, I mean, 10, 15, 20 times, um, you might be sitting with that person in that same situation. Um, but you know, there are times when, it, it, you do see that movement, obviously, and people do grow and change. And uh, just to be able to have been a part of that, it's a very, it's an intimate um, relationship that you have with one, another human being, you know, and it's like you get a piece of humanity. You get to know a, a lot about how other people live too in our world, where we get often kind of just isolated and we connect with people that are very similar to us, you know, have the same type of race or educational status or, but this work, you get to work with all kinds of people and people that have come from other countries or have come, have different languages and different religions. And if you're like interested in humanity and how people live their lives. And I think a lot of us are, I think that's why we like movies and TV. And so you know, that could be of interest to people, but boy, it's not going to be easy. It's not going to be an easy, you know, job, especially as people get started out in the field, because, you, you know, you gotta work your way up like any job. Um, so I think you definitely have to have that passion. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And I think it's, it's true. I think when you talk about rewarding, um, you know, my 10 years of human services really is in community action and the stories that I could tell you and the, the reward alone. I mean, you are, you're not getting complete notoriety and people aren't shouting your name from the rooftops <laughs> with, you know, but it's the idea that this one person who was homeless for 30 years is now permanently housed and sober. And, you know, you're, it's all because of just your support and the organization support. So it's truly rewarding. It really is. So Julie, you have a shout out from Dina Tomlinson. She I see that. put in the chat. So I just wanted to bring that to your attention. So you say hi. Um, that. So you're going to get your case. You're going on to get your bachelor's with your case set. That's that's excellent. Good for you. Awesome, um, Courtney. I just had just a question for you, just to kind of clarify. You know, um, and, and Julie, maybe you can chime in on this. It's not uncommon for adult students to be interested in this field of study. Um, and, you know, sometimes when you're an adult and you're working, you're not eligible for a lot of traditional financial aid. And for many students, that means that they have probably have to take out student loans. With this grant that you have, um, are there any income limits or anything that um, somebody would have to be concerned? Gee, I don't, I probably I'm working. I probably don't I make too much money to benefit from anything, so I don't apply for anything. Can can you address mm -hmm. that with this grant? I think it's there's something unique about it there. Yeah, that's a great question, and um, you know what's really great about this grant is there are no income eligibility requirements. There's actually no requirements <laughs> at all. I mean, we're really hoping um, the CASAC. Uh, 
this journey, like I just put in the chat with my email address for um, Dean or DM, I'm sorry. I, I, you know, it's one of those things I think that um, if you are already coming to FMCC and you're pursuing an associate's degree um, or a, a career track, um, you know, I think that's, of course, a great route to go. If you already have an associate's degree, a bachelor's degree, or a master's degree, you can come back to FMCC and do just the micro-credential for the KSAC, um, and this grant would support that. Um, so, you know, a lot of people who are currently working in the human services field and may already have their completed human services, addiction services, or a bachelor's or master's in social work. I just talked to a student who just finished her MSW and she asked, I never got my case act. She said, can I come back and do it? And I said, a hundred percent. So wow. hoping that, you know, she'll come in and, and start that process. So definitely there's no eligibility requirements. We just really, the best, the best kind of route or journey to take is if you're already pursuing that human services or addiction services tract, um, or if you have a degree already coming back. Yep. So um, I would, oh, I'm sorry. I was just going to add, um, you know, cross training is important too. like, um, you know, people that work in criminal justice, for example, mm -hmm. we do need case acts, because again, obviously, people are incarcerated because of addiction issues, or, you know, so some I've had students come back with like a bachelor's degree in criminal justice, and then need to get that case act for a position that they're interested in. So, you know, I think it, you can think about education, you know, areas of education, areas of health studies. Um, you know, somebody that's going to come into the nursing program to start by taking some of the KSAC classes because mm -hmm. we need, obviously, we have medical care with addictions. We have, you know, all kinds of medications that are prescribed to help people with addictions. So, uh, you know, there's lots of nursing stuff. And so if people can be cross-trained. So any of those people that could get that KSAC credential and Courtney could help them do that. Mm -hmm. I mean, that that would be really beneficial to them. I know, and that's kind of what I was uh, gonna, I was just thinking too, is I actually um, am an alumni of FMCC. I uh, received a general studies or liberal arts associates. Um, and I wish I had this opportunity just because it would have been great while I was pursuing my bachelor's when I transferred to be able to work as a KSAC and get that experience, you know, cause when you, that's that opportunity alone. I mean, if I could have entered the workforce after my bachelor's with experience, it would have been amazing. Um, you know, and I think that's a valid point. If you, if I, if I can add, um, one of the biggest regrets that I had is, you know, when you, when you transfer and you go to a four-year school, the idea is that you're going to get a job right when you get out of college. I got out of college and I started working at a pizza place because I didn't have any experience. So just as a personal example, this would be a great opportunity if you are planning on transferring, no matter what your major is um, coming in to really examine whether or not this would be of interest to you, just because it would be a great experience um, and um, you know, a job employment for when you're working on pursuing your further education. Yeah, that's awesome. That's that's a great uh, example. And thank you for sharing that. I think that's really important for others to hear that. So um, so just to kind of recap, um, here at Fulton Montgomery Community College, we are, we're offering a Human Services Associates of Science, which is a transfer degree, Associates of Applied Science, which is more career-based. You, you come for two years, and the goal is to go right into the workforce. And then we have the Addiction Services uh, AAS, uh, KSAC uh, track as well. And as Julie pointed out, really you can start any of those. And if you decide that you want to switch um, the first semester, you still have a lot of opportunity to do that. So, you know, for students who are interested in either coming to FM for two years and going directly into the workforce, there's a plan for that. Or students who maybe, maybe you do think that you're going to go right into the workforce and then you decide you want to transfer on. There's a lot of opportunity for you to do that as well. I guess I just wanted to add that um, Fulton Montgomery Community College is a, is a smart choice because it's very affordable. Certainly Courtney's got money to help you uh, pay for your tuition if you decide to go um, this particular route, but for $2,500 a semester, it's a very affordable um, option for students and a great stepping stone if you want to go on and get your bachelor's, your master's, and, and even your doctorate at some point. We're a great place to smart, start. We're a small community college, and as you can see, we've got people who genuinely care about their students. They're really interested in your, your success. 
And the application process couldn't be easier. Uh, Fulton Montgomery Community College is an open enrollment school, which means that by virtue of either earning a high school diploma or if you've earned a high school equivalency, a GED that is, um, you're, you will be accepted into any of the programs that Julie was talking about today. Classes for the fall start on September the 1st, so there's still time to apply for the fall semester. You would just simply visit fmcc.edu and click the apply now button, um, fill out the application, get your uh, transcript into us, and one of our admission team members will be in touch with you to walk you through the next steps, help you with getting together with Courtney to get that um, financial assistance and of course of maybe applying for other financial aid as well. Um, we're here certainly all here to help. So with that, I just wanted to say thank you um, to both our presenters, Courtney and Julie, so much for all of your help. Um, it was really a really interesting presentation and um, I wanna thank you all and, and, and wish you all a great day.